this video we're going to talk about learning target 8b part 1 which will be about simplifying multiplying and dividing rational expressions by the end of this lesson we will be able to simplify rational expressions and find and classify all points of discontinuity we'll also be able to multiply rational expressions together and find and classify all those points of discontinuity and lastly, we'll talk about how to divide rational expressions and state any restrictions that we might have on our variable. So in this video, we're going to introduce simplifying and multiplying in, and then in class together tomorrow, we're going to continue on with more examples of simplifying and multiplying and also introduce division. So let's start with our simplifying problems. Our goal in all of these is to simplify the following and then find and classify any points of discontinuity. Our goal in each one of these sections is to ultimately reduce down any common factors we have because we could then, once we're in factored form, cancel any common factors and reduce them down. So for example, a little motivation behind where we're coming from with wanting to factor is if we had the fraction 2 over 8, well when we go to reduce this down, we know 2 over 8 reduces down to be 1 fourth, but the reason that happens is because 8 can be factored as 2 times 2 times 2. From here, one of the twos in the numerator, or the only two in the numerator, can cancel with one of the twos in the denominator, which leaves us with just one in the numerator over two times two in the denominator, which is how we ended up with one fourth. This concept of canceling common factors is the foundation that we're using throughout this unit. So the first step we need to do is make sure that we are in factored form. Right now in our first example, we are in standard form for each one of these quadratics. We have x squared plus 2x minus 80 in the numerator, and x squared plus 13x plus 30 in the denominator. So our first step will be to factor these out. Why don't you guys pause the video here and factor out both the numerator and the denominator, and then we'll check that together. So to check our factoring of the numerator, this would factor as x minus 8, times x plus 10 since we were looking for two numbers to multiply to be negative 80 and add up to be positive 2 and in our denominator that will factor as x plus 10 times x plus 3 since we needed two numbers that multiply to be 30 and add up to be 13. Now that we are in factored form we are able to reduce and cancel out any common factors. In this case x plus 10, since we have a factor of that in both the numerator and the denominator, can cancel and reduce down. The x minus 8 has no corresponding factor in the denominator, so that will be left over, as well as the x plus 3 has no corresponding factor in the numerator, so we will be left with x minus 8 over x plus 3. From here, since x minus 8 and x plus 3 are two different factors, we cannot reduce this any further. It's really tempting to want to cancel those x's, but that x in the numerator is connected with the negative 8. That's one factor together, just like the x in the denominator is connected with the plus 3 as an x plus 3 factor. And since these are not identical factors, we cannot simplify anything any further. So x minus 8 over x plus 3 will be our most simplified form. The next step that we're doing in all of these is finding and classifying any points of discontinuity. So in learning target 8a, we learned that a discontinuity occurs when we have an issue with the domain. So any of our factors in our denominator are going to produce points of discontinuity for us. And we also learned that we have two types. We have removable and non-removable discontinuities. Why don't you guys pause the video here and list your points of discontinuity that we have for this example. And I'm going to shorthand points of discontinuity just so we don't have to write it out every time. So in this case we have two points of discontinuity. They happen at x equals negative 10, which comes from the x plus 10 factor. And we also have x equals negative 3, which comes with, from the x plus 3 factor. And as a little reminder, each one of those is coming by setting that corresponding factor equal to zero and solving. So if we set x plus 10 equal to zero, we would get the x equals negative 10. And if we also set the factor of x plus 3 equal to zero, that's giving us x equals negative 3. The reason we only set the denominator equal to zero is we're looking for all of the issues that would produce some number, which could be zero, 
over zero. So we're looking for all of these undefined values which come when our denominator is equal to zero. Those are our points of discontinuity. To classify these, we have those two types, removable and non-removable. In this case, x equals negative 10 is called a removable discontinuity because the corresponding factor of x plus 10 reduced out and canceled. It was removed from that equation from the canceling. And x equals negative 3 is called non-removable because its corresponding factor of x plus 3 did not get reduced down and canceled out. It is still left over in our final answer. Let's look at example 2. So in example 2, we have x squared minus 2x minus 35 over x squared minus x minus 42. Our first step we're going to have to do is we need to make sure that we are in factored form. Why don't you guys pause the video here and factor both the numerator and the denominator. Okay, let's check the factoring. In the numerator, this will factor as x plus 5 times x minus 7. And in our denominator, this will factor as x plus 6 times x minus 7. From here, why don't you guys finish out this problem, simplify down anything that will simplify, and then find your points of discontinuity and classify them. So for this example, we have those x minus 7s that will reduce down and cancel each other out since we have one factor in the numerator and an identical factor in the denominator. That will leave us with x plus 5 in the numerator over x plus 6 in the denominator. And since these are two different factors, we cannot reduce down any further. And that will be our final simplified answer. Now to find our points of discontinuity, those are coming from where our denominator is equal to zero. And I forgot to mention up above, but it's the original denominator before anything reduces down. So in this case, we have two points of discontinuity. x equals negative 6, which is coming from the x plus 6 factor. And x equals positive 7, which is coming from the x minus 7 factor. Since the x plus 6 factor did not cancel, that corresponding point point of discontinuity is called a non-removable discontinuity, whereas the x equals 7, since that corresponding factor did cancel out, that is called a removable discontinuity. We have one more example of simplifying in example number 3 here. We're going to use that as a warm-up in class together tomorrow. So let's look at multiplying now. Multiplying is going to use the same concepts that we had for simplifying, but instead of just having one expression that we're simplifying, we have two identical expressions, or not identical, but two expressions multiplied together that we're going to simplify. So why don't we go ahead and factor every single portion of this, and then we'll check that factoring together. So to check our factoring here, the first numerator is going to factor as x plus 8, times x plus 1, and our denominator on the first expression is going to factor as x times x minus 13. In our second rational expression we have, the numerator will factor as x minus 13 times x plus 1, and our denominator will factor as x plus 8 times x minus 4. Now that we have everything factored, and we're multiplying, technically we're multiplying across in this fraction. So the x plus 8 times the x plus 1 is getting multiplied with the x minus 3, 13 times the x plus 1. So if we wanted to, we could actually write this as one single rational expression with the x plus 8 times the x plus 1 times the x minus 13 times the x plus 1 all over the x times the x minus 13 times the x plus 8 times the x minus 4. And from here, just like we did before with simplifying when we had one single expression, any factors that we have in both the numerator and the denominator can reduce out. So in this example, the x plus 8 in the numerator can cancel out with the x plus 8 in the denominator. The x minus 13 in the numerator can also cancel with the x minus 13 in the denominator. 
In the numerator, we are left with two x plus ones. These cannot cancel because they're both in the numerator. And so instead, those can get combined together to be an x plus one squared, since we have the same copy there twice, over the remaining factors in the denominator, which is x times x minus four. And that will be our final simplified answer here. For all of these, I am gonna ask that our final answers are left in factored form. We could actually continue to distribute and rewrite both of these in standard form, but I wanna see it left in factored form so that you know for sure that all of our factors canceled. The next thing we wanna do is find and classify all points of discontinuity. And our points of discontinuity, just like before, are coming from any places where our denominator is going to be equal to zero. So why don't you guys pause the video here and find all of your points of discontinuity and then classify them each individually as removable or non-removable. So in this example, we're gonna end up with four different points of discontinuity. The first one is coming from that first factor of an x. That's going to give us x equals zero as a point of discontinuity. We're then gonna get a discontinuity from the x minus 13 factor. So that will be x equals 13. We get another point of discontinuity from the x plus eight, which will give us x equals negative eight as a point of discontinuity. And then our last point of discontinuity is coming from the x minus four, which will give us a listed over here, x equals four as another point of discontinuity. Now to see if they're removable or non-removable, we wanna see if their corresponding factors canceled out or are still left over. For the x equals zero, since the x is left over in our denominator, that is a non-removable discontinuity. For the x equals 13, since the x minus 13s did end up canceling out, we'll call that a removable discontinuity. For the x equals negative eight, since that factor also canceled and reduced down, that is a removable discontinuity. And then for the x equals four, since that uh, x minus four factor is still there, that would be a non-removable discontinuity. Let's look at example five. Why don't you guys pause the video here and start by factoring out example five and then we'll check that factoring together. All right, when factoring out here in example five, we first get an x minus one times that x plus one to factor the x squared minus one. To factor our first denominator, we'll get x minus 10 times x plus four. To factor our second expression, we're gonna get x plus four times x plus two in the numerator. And in the denominator, we can factor out a three at least to get three times that x minus one. And we do wanna go ahead and factor out anything even as small as just a single scalar or a coefficient there just to make sure we're in our most, or not our most, just to make sure that we are in factored form completely. From here, why don't you guys see if anything can reduce down and cancel, and then we'll check our final answer together. So in this case, that x minus one in the numerator on the left side will reduce down and cancel with the x minus one in the denominator of the second one. We can cross cancel, of course, across because ultimately we could rewrite this as one single fraction. We can also cancel the x plus fours, one in the numerator and one in the denominator. From here, I have no other like factors that we can cancel, so we're left with x plus one times x plus two in the numerator over x minus 10 times three in the denominator. And that will be our final answer that's simplified down. Why don't you guys now pause the video and find all of our points of discontinuity and classify those, and then we'll check that together. So in this case, we're gonna end up with three different points of discontinuity. The first one is coming from the x minus 10. That will give us x equals 10 as a point of discontinuity. We then get a discontinuity of x equals negative four, which is coming from the x plus four factor. And our last point of discontinuity comes from the x minus one. And that will give us x equals one as a point of discontinuity. The three is not gonna produce a point of discontinuity because there's no x there. If we were to think about this as a factor and set it equal to zero, well, 
three is never going to equal zero, so that's not giving us any new factors. So that's giving us no points of discontinuity then. And that's coming down to the fact that ultimately three itself is a number, which is never going to be equal to zero, and there's no x there to solve for. To classify these, x equals 10 is the only one that is non-removable, since that factor was left over. And x equals negative 4 and x equals 1 are both removable, since their corresponding factors each canceled out and reduced down. Just like with simplifying, we do have one more multiplication problem here. We're going to use example 6 as a warm-up tomorrow together in class. And then after we do examples 3 and 6 together, we are going to move on and talk about what would happen if we were to divide rational expressions and go through a few of those examples.